Hello students, I am Dr. Bhagyesh Deshmukh, Professor in Mechanical Engineering Department, Valchan Institute of Technology, Solapur. This session is on design of lever. This is the topic from the course Machine Design 1. At the end of this session, we will be able to establish the design equations for a lever. Let us see how a lever is to be designed. The lever length is decided as per the leverage required. If you have a long lever, we can lift heavy load with the help of a small effort. We can see it in the Tommy bar of a wheel. When we want to remove the wheel of a truck, usually the cleaner or the driver uses a long lever and you usually they stand on it to remove. This is what is the leverage. With the help of small force, long lever length, we can apply a great torque, great force, and that is what is the beauty of a lever. Lever length is very important in design of a lever. Then we need to lift a load F by means of an effort P. We need to design the lever accordingly and thus select the leverage. The cross section of the lever is designed on the basis of bending stresses. We need to consider the bending failure which is the dominant failure for a lever cross section. In this design of lever, the first step is to calculate the forces. Force analysis becomes very important. On this lever, these two are the forces, the load F and the effort P. This is the fulcrum. Distance of the load is L2 from the fulcrum and distance of effort is L1 from the fulcrum. The load is taken as F and the effort P is required to produce the force is calculated by taking the moments at about the fulcrum. This is the fulcrum point where we are supposed to take the moments around. We can use the equation F equals L2 equals P into L1. We can use this and calculate the required force. The required force is P which is equal to F multiplied by L2 by L1. L2 by L1 are the dimensions of the lever. This is the first type of the lever. Then the vertical force denoted is the reaction R. We are supposed to calculate this reaction R also. The vertical forces acting on the lever must be in equilibrium. In order to keep the system in equilibrium, FP, the summation, must be equal to this vertical force R, vertical upward force R, as F and P are vertically downwards. Therefore, R equals F plus P. This is the equation that we need to use. This is the case wherein forces are parallel on the lever. There can be a case where we can find inclined forces. Let us see the second type of lever. F is in between R and P. The load and the effort act in opposite direction. This is the load upward vertically and P effort vertically downward. These are opposite in nature. Vertical forces acting on the lever must be in equilibrium. Same equation we need to use. F equals R plus P. That is the change equation. We need to keep the system in equilibrium. This is again the case where forces are parallel. And then next, if the forces acting on the lever are inclined, not straight vertically upward or downward, but those are inclined to the axis of the lever, we need to analyze with a somewhat different methodology. L1 is the perpendicular distance for line of action of force P and L2 is the perpendicular distance for line of action of force F. These forces are inclined, not parallel analysis become slightly different. 
for this bell crank lever the arms are inclined at an angle theta the force f and p act right angle to the arm line this is the arm line of the arm force f is perpendicular to it this is the other arm and effort p is perpendicular to it then the l1 and l2 are the corresponding arm lengths reaction at the fulcrum is equal to the resultant of f and p f and p these two the reaction at fulcrum is the resultant of f and p in which equation is to be used so you can think upon it the line of action r passes through the intersection of p and f the line of action of r is this it should pass through point o which is the intersection of extension of line f and p can recall from where this formula has been used r equal f square plus p square minus 2 fp cos theta square root of f for a right angle bell crank lever where the theta becomes 90 cos theta equals 0 the formula can be simplified r equals square root of f square plus p square recall the concept of parallelogram of forces and law of parallelogram of forces then next step is finding out the lever cross section lever cross section is subjected to bending moment for a two arm lever this f and p are acting over here this is the boss section l1 is the length of effort arm l1 minus v1 it is a weak section where the lever may fail or which it is prone for failure bending moment is zero at the point of application of p and or f and maximum at the boss section this is the boss zone o oh, here the bending moment will be maximum the lever cross section can be either rectangular or an elliptical accordingly we need to select the equations for section modules now in this lever bending moment is maximum at the section axis which is given by mb equals p p is the for effort p l1 minus this d because total diameter outside diameter of the boss is 2d this is d l1 minus d is the momentum cross section of the lever can be rectangular elliptical or i let us take an case of rectangular cross section for a rectangular cross section i equals bd cube by 12 and y becomes d by 2 where d is parallel to the neutral axis b and d is perpendicular to the neutral axis and the condition is d equals 2 times b that is what is the assumption we need to do if the cross section of the lever is an elliptical then i changes to by b a cube by 64 and y becomes a by 2 what is a and b where a is the major axis and b is the minor axis and the condition is a equals twice of b the dimensions of the of the lever cross section can be obtained by the equation sigma b equals m b y by i this is nothing but bending stress equals m by i by y where i by y is z of the section modules we need to take a great care while selecting the section cross section of a lever in the previous slide we have seen that the bending moment is maximum at the fulcrum point and it is minimum at or it is zero at the point of application of effort it is very clear that bending moment is minimum and maximum therefore it is not advisable to use uniform cross section of an lever therefore what we can do is we can use a tapered lever in order to save the material that is called as lever of uniform strength seen this part 
the final equation we have seen for rectangular cross section then for an elliptical cross section bending moment the equation this is what is the design of a leaf for a fulcrum pin we need to use the bearing consideration b1 and l1 are the pin dimensions we need to use bearing pressure for the pin design the projected area is b1 l1 r is equal to bearing pressure multiplied by the projected area and p is the permissible bearing pressure the length and diameter ratio is taken as 1 is to 2 od of the boss is taken as two times the pin diameter phosphor bond bush of thin and thick is used to reduce the friction permissible bearing pressure is around 5 to 10 newton per mm square thank you